Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, where it was on this day in 1999 that the infamous Woodstock 1999 festival began, and it did not end well. <clears throat> now, this festival was supposed to be the music industry's triumph, if you will. In 1969, the original Woodstock Festival, say that three times fast, was held, and it was generally considered a massive massive success in artistic terms. It, of course, wasn't a success in financial terms because no one paid for the tickets. They just took down the fences and the MCs announced, well, hell, it's a free show now. Uh, but it was remembered uh, again for its great performances. Santana and Jimi Hendrix really stole the show. Joe Cocker did a great set. The Who did a great set. Jefferson Airplane. I mean, the list goes on. Um, Blood, Sweat and Tears. Great set. Um, I can't name them all, but literally a lineup of legends. Richie Havens, who could forget his wonderful acoustic set, Freedom. Um, but again, uh, this isn't so much about that, although it does help to provide a bit of context. So Woodstock 90, uh, the original Woodstock in 69 didn't make any money initially, but uh, the creators of the festival did strike a film rights deal with Warner Brothers, and the film, which was released a year or so later, <clears throat> became a huge success. It's notable because they had sort of many shots lined up. Uh, they blew it up to 70 millimeters so that it could be presented in six track magnetic surround sound, beautiful stuff. And that's how uh, they eventually made their money from the big festival. And it's really the idea of money that is mainly at the root of, went wrong, of what went wrong in 1999. Now, it wasn't the only Woodstock revival between the original 69 festival Festival and the 99 fiasco. There was one in 1994, which was generally well received, pretty mellow traffic or what was left of them. Steve Winwood and Jim Capaldi, that is, did a reunion, which I think was very, very good. And it was all very chill. But things were very different in 1999. And there were quite a few underlying causes for that. Everything was overpriced. So while well, today, I guess people are somewhat conditioned to pay, you know, a thousand dollars for nosebleed sections of the Taylor Swift show. Here's your thirty dollar beer. Uh, would you like a ten dollar straw to go with it? And people just sort of lie down and take it. Um, but Gen X were pretty pissed off in 1999 and where the boomers were all about sex, drugs, rock and roll with a bit of hypocrisy uh, thrown in on the side and a bit of racial tensions because the white, wealthier, middle class kids could get deferments away from the war in Vietnam, where most of the black kids and some of the poorer white kids obviously could not. Um, it was a very different social scene in 1999. It was really a generation that was pissed off about not getting their money's worth. The food, the drink was too expensive. Supplies ran out quickly. The toilet facilities were subpar. And this led to looting, to rioting, and eventually on the second night to an all-out literal inferno where people just started grabbing whatever they could find, smashing it, burning it. There were reports of assault sexual assault and all sorts of criminality. The police have been blamed for exacerbating the situation by some, where others blame security and the police for not doing enough to stop the chaos from breaking out. And a lot of it lost in the fog of war, or should I say the fog of a music festival. So what really was the scene like in, in the 90s? Well, the optimism of the 60s, which was an economic boom time, but with all of these underlying social tensions due to questions about civil rights at home and the war in Vietnam abroad. Um, it was a different scene in 1999. In 1999, and really the whole 90s decade, was sort of the calm before the storm. And it shows what happens when society gets overly complacent. And things boiled over in 1999 because people that were expecting 
expecting to have a good time were met with the bare face of musical corporatism. Now, 1999 was also a significant year in the music industry because that's when Napster came out. And Napster was really giving two fingers to a music industry that was squeezing its customers more and more. In other words, it was making them pay more than that, more than they had ever paid before, and they were getting less in return. So at that time, the average CD was between $15 and $18. And with everything right now in 2024 being so expensive because of this extreme inflation, one of the things that hasn't gone up in price is music. And that's not only true when it comes to streaming and downloads, but if you want to buy a new physical CD, which few people do, but you still can, it's going to generally, unless it's a deluxe edition or an audiophile essay CD, it's going to be less than $18 dollars especially when you adjust for inflation and Napster came along and said we're not going to take it we're not going to spend 18 bucks on a CD for two good songs and the rest of it is filler because the CD itself allowed for more filler because you can literally fill a CD with more minutes of music than an LP or a standard cassette tape and people felt like they were getting ripped off. And Woodstock 99 was kind of the encapsulation of that. This was Gen X. This was the Beavis and Butthead generation. Um, it was a generation where if you wanted to get ahead, it was a lot easier than it is now. But at the same time, a kind of post-Cold War, post gold standard that went away in 71 malaise was really sort of kicking in. And it was a decade, like I said, where all of this tension was really bubbling below the surface. When you looked at the surface of, of Western and particularly American society in the 1990s, everything looked okay. Um, people, if they were to believe the mainstream news, would think that Bill Clinton getting a blowjob was the most important thing in the world. But there were sanctions on Iraq, very controversial, millions of children killed. There were wars in the former Yugoslavia and the involvement of countries like the US, like Germany, like Britain, like France, continues to be extremely controversial and a huge cataclysm was right around the corner 9-11 and just when people thought that the world was becoming more calm after that in comes the great recession and then comes the political upheavals of 2016 then comes covid then comes extreme inflation and then comes this year where we're seeing all sorts of horrific things and unpredictable things go on if you could even see this because you might be a victim of the great Proud strike IT failure of 2024. But the 90s was really the soft prelude to this. So when people remember the 90s as a placid time, yeah, a placid time for some, but all of this feeling of discontent that has become par for the course in the post 9-11, post Great Recession, post COVID, post inflation world, it was below the surface. And 1999 at that Woodstock Revival Festival is when we saw a lot of this boil over the surface. And that's why I think even today you see Gen Xers being a lot more with it in terms of calling things out than the boomers who got complacent. Because while the boomers pretended to be radical in the 60s because they didn't want to fight in Vietnam, I don't blame them. I think that war was horrific. It shouldn't have happened. But there was some hypocrisy there. If you were a of a certain background with a certain wealth, you could get out of fighting in most cases. If not, you had to go and in many cases die. But like George Carlin said the boomers got complacent. Uh, the hippies of the 60s became the yuppies of the Reagan and the post-Reagan era. Uh, they traded cocaine for Rogaine. Again, to quote George Carlin, and I really think that in many ways Woodstock 99 was that first rebellion against the boomer establishment uh, that by the 90s was starting to replace the establishment of most, I would say men and women, but mostly men uh, who fought in the Second World War. And a lot of people were starting to realize that these boomers who came with such seemingly good intentions were actually much less competent at running things than the generation that came before. And the kids of that day, Gen X, they were mad as hell. They weren't going to take it. Obviously, the things that happened cannot be condoned, the arson, the assaults, and the rest of it. But 
that poured out of what I consider justifiable anger over being hosed, being screwed with expensive facilities that weren't even staffed correctly, that weren't prepared correctly. There was feces flowing about because the toilets didn't work. People did absolutely have a right to be upset about that. And it all ended in flame and it all turned to ash. And it was really a preview of how that sort of post-Cold War consensus that arrogant people thought would last forever, it barely lasted 10 years. And Woodstock 99, in a musical sense, were the kids telling the boomers who were just starting to take power, hey, we don't share this utopian vision. We are getting screwed. Look what has happened since. So that's my view of what happened and more importantly, why it happened during Woodstock 99. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Take care.